if you ever do any any upper, uh, upper division philosophy, how many people are actually thinking about doing upper division philosophy past this? Oh, you poor, poor science. Seriously, uh, you may hear this referred to as a, a res cogitant. The thinking thing is the res cogitant. Likewise, uh, I think, therefore I am, is cogito ergo sum. It'd be, a, it'd be a crime if you got to upper division philosophy and I didn't tell you that, believe it or not. Because we'll say, what is, well, with Descartes' cogito argument and all. And we're like, is cogito what? If you're going to his car up, what? Huh? I think, therefore, I am is cogito ergo sum. He wrote it in Latin. I am a thinking thing. Sum res cogitan. At this point, he has, uh, he's developed a ground for what his philosophy is. He wants to identify the mind. And he's identified the mind as a thing that thinks. Though, uh, this really isn't a tenable place to leave philosophy. What, what do we know at this point? And? The mind is thinking. And that's about it. Go forth and leave fruitful lives. Not likely. But before we go on to tell you, this is going to be a bit of a cliffhanger for a bit. Before I tell you exactly, I know, edge of seats, where he's going to go from here. A bit more exciting. You've got to take a 10 minute break. I know, it's so disappointing. I know, I know. Come back and tell. with this recording. I very much appreciate it. Okay, so we left us with, I think, therefore I am. We have no certainty of mathematics. We have no certainty of my senses. I have no certainty of, well, really anything. But he can say, and this is, this is where you're likely to not much like Descartes. He's got us into a black hole, and he wants, to, and now he's got to pull a rabbit out of his hat to get us out. Okay, throw the rabbit. Mm -hmm. Solipsism is what we call this, not being able to have anything except your mind in a vat. You're talking about matrix. Well, at least in the matrix, you had your perceptions. Here, we got nothing. We got our thoughts. So what can we rely on? And you're not going to like this, because you're going to feel cheated. And it's OK to feel cheated. Because I was in my first philosophy class listening to the same thing, and the entire class was angry, about ready to rage against the professor and Descartes. We were going to kill him if it wasn't for the fact that he's already long dead. Just to prepare you for what's going to happen. What he does, and we're not going to go into great detail, is uh, he says that I can clearly and distinctly perceive that I think they're boring him. I think, therefore, I am is something I can perceive clearly and distinctly. It is something I can perceive clearly, or something I understand. I shouldn't say perceive. That's, that's a bit of a misnomer. I can understand clearly and distinctly. And he asks, are there any thoughts that I can cling to that are as clear and distinct? Because he's gone and he's tossed everything out. This is the one nugget he's got. He's going to build from there. Is there anything else that is as clear as that? And so he says to himself, I have a notion of God. And he goes on to, to present a proof for the existence of God. Now, we're going to get to proofs for, proofs against the existence of God later on in the semester when we tackle philosophy of religion. 
we can you know, attack this all you'd like because even those of you who may agree with this conclusion will want to critique his methods. This is okay. Um, let, let's just take this as it is for right now. I have, I should say, I have a notion of God. And not only is this a God, but it's also a perfect God. Okay. Now, is there, can we spontaneously generate anything? Something's got to come from somewhere. And certainly, yeah. Um, just real quick, this one has a capital G as in. Absolutely. He is talking about Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, whole nine yards. He was, uh, he was a very devout fan. So, very, very good question. Um, in this case, he says, can, can we have a thought that is generated, or something that is spontaneously generated? I'm like, no, something's got to come from somewhere. And you know, if we say that we have ideas, even composites of ideas of things that maybe even don't exist, if I say Pegasus, what is that? Okay. You've taken the idea of horse, you stuck wings on it, there you go. You didn't generate that from nowhere. You had maybe an experience of a bird, an experience of a horse, tossed the two of them in the sack, shook it really hard, and Pegasus fell out. Well, let's hope that's not the case, <coughs> because I could get pretty sick. But we have this idea of a perfect God. Now, where did you get the idea of a perfect God? And he says, really? The idea of perfection cannot be generated in the imperfect. Now, you might say, well, I can conceive of a perfect island, and that doesn't make it so. But when we talk about the perfection of all perfections, perfection of all attributes, perfection cannot be generated in the mind of something infinite, or of something finite. It, perfection cannot be generated in something like human beings, it has to be put there from someplace else. And so where did I get this idea of God? <laughs> because God put the idea in my mind. Do, do you follow him? Anybody, anybody agree with him? It's okay if you do. Air, very empty of hands. Okay. We're going to find out what, hold on, why isn't this very convincing? It's just like he's making something up. It just sounds like he's making up stuff. But, yeah. It also has been passed from generation to generation. Okay. So where did that idea come from? From the first person? Yeah, I originally put it in people's heads. Okay, so you're agreeing with him then? Okay. Stick to your guns. You're willing to stick to those guns? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. We'll, 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 yeah? He's justifying the existence of God with the existence of God. Uh, yes and no. Um, again, I want to I emphasize that I'm giving you a very, very boiled down version of this. And I, I am perhaps oversimplifying. He is, um, there are critiques for this concept. But I, I think that perhaps it's my method of presentation for the sake of got to get out of here at some point this evening, um, that I'm putting in a real... Mm -hmm. uh, would you be content to know that we will be covering this in great detail later? Would that be okay? Okay. All right. Is any, anybody else angry with me for, for cheap-shotting you at this point? Okay. Any more? Okay. <laughs> your, your anger is justified. Okay. But yeah, the way that I presented it, it seems as though he's... The idea of, 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 of God exists because I have the idea that God exists. Yeah, but it, it doesn't it, it doesn't gel well with, with a lot of people. We'll, 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 we'll figure that out why. Um, so he says he proves to his to his own satisfaction. I should, I, I should say that 